most modern applications are using some type of dependency injection framework. That means if you're building WPF applications, that's no different. But what dependency injection framework should you be using for WPF? Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. Traditionally, I've used Autofac for almost all of my dependency injection. However, if you've used ASP.NET Core and you're familiar with iService Collection, you're well aware that iService Collection is a pretty robust dependency injection framework at this point in time. So that means if you're building WPF applications, you can probably do a whole lot using iService Collection as your DI framework. So in this video, I'm going to walk through how we can set that up with a very simple example, and we can see how we can start to do dependency injection and get our services resolved to go start our WPF application. A quick reminder that if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel, check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train, and let's jump over to Visual Studio and our WPF app. On my screen, I have a simple WPF application. This is from a previous video that I have done. So if you haven't checked that out, you're not familiar with WPF, you should go check out that video. There'll be a link above. You can go check it out, come back. But it's really just a super quick primer on some things in WPF if you're not familiar with the framework at all. To start things off and where I was leaving off in that video is that some of the patterns in WPF I'm not a huge fan of. And one of them is that when we're dealing with data context, which are sort of like the thing that we want to be able to bind to, like the code behind the state that we want to bind to with our control, a lot of the times we end up doing things like newing them up in the constructors or from the outside of the class. We've made a new instance of main window and someone else on the outside will go assign the data context. I'm not a huge fan of either of those two things, and that's because I much prefer to have things passed in through the constructor. Traditionally, what I would like to see is something like this. Main window view model gets passed in here. So we'd have a view model here, and then we go do something like this. This totally works. It's functionally going to be identical as long as we go instantiate a new one of those things before we create the main window. But what we find a lot of the time is that in WPF, we're not creating things like this. In my experience, it almost feels like an anti-pattern that you're working against things because the way that we're creating a lot of these controls really is that we have a parameterless constructor. We'll go assign the data context, blah, blah, blah. Just not what I like to do. It doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. It's just a personal preference. And I find that it's not very common. I see WPF code written like this. I almost wish that this was enforced. And that way, a lot of dependency injection concepts just kind of apply naturally. This is going to be one of the first steps that we can take to go make dependency injection work pretty smoothly when we're dealing with a simple window like this. So in this example application, what I'm going to do is basically transform it into using dependency injection instead of what we normally see. This is just a brief interruption to remind you that I do have courses available on Dome Train focused on C Sharp. So whether you're interested in getting started in C Sharp, looking for a little bit more of an intermediate course focused on object-oriented programming and some async programming, or are you just looking to update your refactoring skills and see some examples that we can walk through together. You can go ahead and check them out by visiting the links in the description and the comment below. Thanks and back to the video. If I were to go run this now, this is not going to do what we want. And I'm going to back it up a little bit so you can see the difference when I go run it. But when I go create the data context like this, if I go show you in the XAML, we are binding the window title to custom title. And there's a label right in the middle of the screen that we're binding to custom label. If I jump back into the code, you can see those two values defined here. So if I go run this now, right, there's no dependency injection or anything fancy going on, but we do have that binding working as we might expect. Very simple. But if I go back and put this code in, that I had to go use dependency injection, what's going to happen? We're going to get an exception thrown, and that's because we're unable to go find, as it says here, the right constructor. Why is this happening? How did we go build this main window in the first place? Why can't it know what the view model is? What's up, right? So it's just another quick example of why you don't see this thing really as a first class approach for going to do this kind of stuff, but that's okay. There's going to be something we can easily do to change this up. The first thing to understand is how is main window actually getting instantiated? I don't know where that is in the code. If we go look here, right? This is the startup part of the application. There's nothing that even says, go make a new main window and show it. That's because it's happening on app XAML.cs. You can see this startup URI points at the main window XAML file. WPF knows to go launch this window as the startup. And in fact, if I go take this off completely, which is going to seem kind of funny, this application is going to, air quotes, 
work. It's going to work but not do anything at all. You probably can't tell, but this application is currently running. It's doing exactly what we said. You can see in Visual Studio, there's a stop button and I can't continue because it is currently running. It's just not showing a window because we didn't tell it to. We gotta play around with these two concepts. The first is that if we have this code in here to have this startup URI, it's going to try looking for a public parameterless constructor on main window. The problem is that we don't have that. And we don't have that because I've gone ahead and I've modified the only constructor to take in the view model. I want to force us to pass this thing in because I don't think we should have a main window without providing the view model for it. This is a design philosophy that I like to have when I'm building with UI frameworks. And in fact, with most applications, I like to be able to pass stuff in through the constructor, not assign it afterwards. Okay, so what are we gonna do about this? And this is where dependency injection is gonna come into play. We are going to keep this part removed. We don't want to have our application launch the window that way. Instead, we're gonna take control of the startup of our application. We're going to set up a dependency injection container and then we're going to resolve the main window to make sure that we can show it. And the final thing, if you stay to the end of this video, is I'm going to show you how you can make this a plugin, which is pretty cool in my opinion. In order to make this work, I'm gonna start leveraging iService collection to make sure that we can get dependency injection set up. So we're gonna do that inside of the constructor of our application. So we're gonna go public app to get the constructor going on here. And then from there, what I'd like to do is create the service collection. So we'll have a service collection, so this is going to come from the Microsoft Extensions Dependency Injection. So if you're not familiar with that, if you're used to uh, ASP.NET Core, you're getting that automatically, but it is this NuGet package right here that I've added in. From there, we go take our service collection, we'll make a new one. Then we need to go register our services. So traditionally what you see is either what Copilot's suggesting here, with this kind of syntax, or you will see that people end up using extension methods and kind of flip the order of these things to read how they'd like. We'll come to that in just a moment. What I'm gonna do now is make the service provider. So thank you very much, Copilot, for doing that for us. Then what we're going to do is resolve the main window, and you can see Copilot knows what's up. So we'll get that main window, and then main window.show, which is also what Copilot knows how to do. But the problem right now is that we have not gone and done this. So I'm just gonna show you how this works the traditional way. So again, very common thing that you'll see in ASP.NET Core. I don't have to do any work, just blab apparently, and Copilot can do the rest. This is the future of software engineering if you're curious. <laughs> there we go, we have our extension methods. You can see that we're adding singletons in for the view model and the main window. Again, if we go back up here and think about what this is doing, we're going to make our container, so our service collection. We will do the configuration, which registers these two things down here. These are two dependencies we need. We'll get the service provider, so we'll finish sort of building that container. Then we go resolve our main window. Now, by doing this, if you recall, when I ran the application before, it crashed. It basically said, hey, look, I know you're asking for the main window, but I can't build this thing because I don't even know where this main window view model is coming from. With dependency injection, especially the way we've set this up, we're able to get that automatically. So if we go ahead and press play, we should see that this resolves our dependencies very nicely for us. We get the view model inserted into the window automatically through the constructor, and then all the bindings take place perfectly for us, as we can see on the screen right now. Now, I did mention that if you stay towards the end of this video, I will show you how to make this work with plugins, and that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in this next video that you can watch here. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.